Hi, this is Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today we are making snowballs. These snowballs are super great. There's no stuffing required. All you need is your yarn and a hook. So that's super easy, no additional supplies. And you can make different sizes based on the hook you're using. This is a seven millimeter hook, so it's quite big and spacious. And I just use regular uh, Canyon Acrylic Craft Yarn, so a four thickness. This is with a six millimeter, and this is with a five millimeter. So five millimeters are a bit more hard than the six millimeter and the seven is really soft and squishy. So a seven millimeter would be great for like babies or like a super soft, super soft balls for inside the house. And the six millimeter is the one that I like the most just because it's a good size and it's still firm enough to feel like a ball. And I think the five millimeter might be a bit too hard. It's still very squishy. You can see how squishy it is. But I th it's also good, you can also do a mix and have a whole bunch of different sized snowballs in your collection. Another thing you can do is put in a little bit of yellow snow. That's up to your personal preference, but I'm definitely putting a little yellow snow in some of my balls. Not many of my snowballs, just a couple here or there. Just to make it a little more challenging. You wouldn't want to get hit with a yellow snowball. So let's get started. So all you need to get started making your snowballs is yarn and a hook. I'm just using Kenyan acrylic. It's kind of like a super saver, I suppose, just regular craft acrylic. Anything you have on hand would work just fine. You can also do it with scraps and your even if it's a bit of an ivory color, your snowballs could be slightly different colors, which I think would be totally cool also. So I'm also gonna be making some just with my scraps. You're also going to need a needle and scissors. So get your hook and yarn ready. And we're just gonna start by making a slip knot. We want to leave a bit of a tail about five or six inches. We need that for later. So just make a slip knot any which way that you do. Shrink it down and put it on your hook. Now chain three. One, two, and three. So we need to go into our first chain, which is just here. You don't count what's on your hook and you don't count this little knot in the beginning. You just count these Vs. So there's one, two, and three. So we're just gonna go straight into that first chain. So just push your hook in. It doesn't really matter where at all. I just get one loop onto my hook. And now we're gonna hold that tail down along the side so we know where it's gonna be and wiggle your finger and your thumb just an, into that space in that U shape there. You just wanna be able to hold it open. So get it good and comfortable in there and grab your yarn and bring it through both loops on your hook. So that's a slip stitch. And now chain three, one, two, and three. Wrap your yarn and go right into where you're holding it open. You see how we were holding it open? That gives us the center of our ring so we don't have to guess where it is. So just push your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back. And we're gonna make one double crochet. So wrap your yarn and take off two, wrap your yarn and take off two. Our chain also counts as a double crochet in this pattern. So we need to do 10 more. We need a total of 12 double crochets into this tiny little ring. Yes, they will fit. So 10 more double crochets into the center of this ring. There's one more. I'll just show you in slow motion. So keep going like that. We need a total of 11 double crochets and 12 including that chain three. If you run out of room, grab that chain where you started and grab your stitches and just slide your stitches back. You can be a little rough. Just get some more space in that ring for the, your last double crochets. And you don't have to go over your tail. You can just leave that hang. We need it for tying later. When you think you have your 12, just go back and count. And I just wiggle my fingers in between the stitches so I can like separate those posts and that's how I do my counting. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So that is exactly what we want. It's great. So now we're going to chain to the top of the chain three and we're still counting our V's. There's one V kind of hiding in that little area there, the first V, second V, and here's the third V. So we're just gonna go into that stitch right there. So just push your hook in. You wanna get two loops on your hook and I just use my finger to slide a couple of those loops on like that. We're leaving one, we're not, so we're just gonna go through that stitch. You don't wanna go into the space. You wanna go into the stitch. So grab your yarn and bring it back. Turn your hook and go through that last loop. So that's a slip stitch. Chain three again, one, two, and three. And now we're gonna make two double crochets into each stitch going all the way around. And this chain where we started, if you separate that stitch, you'll see that there's a little stitch before and a little stitch after. So you can pick which one you're going to go into, but you can't go into both. So I usually just go into the one straight after because this little spot there looks a little easier to get into than this spot over there. But it's up to you. You can, you can pick which one you're going to go into. But I'm going to go into this one right after. So my chain counts as a double crochet and this is a second double crochet. So that counts as two double crochets into that stitch. Our next stitch is right here. You have to kind of pick up this weird loop and go in to underneath that loop and into that loop behind. So that is your next stitch. So there's always the chain that's weird and then there's always a stitch that's weird. The rest is going to look all the same. So I'm just going to go under that that loop that's loose. Poke my hook in. So two loops of that stitch on my hook. Grab my yarn and bring it back. Wrap your yarn and take off two. Wrap your yarn and take off two. So there's your double crochet. And we're gonna do one more into that same exact spot. Like that. So each stitch is gonna get two double crochets in this round. So we started with 12 stitches and we're gonna end up with 24. And I'll meet you when we get to the join. I've worked my way around and now I'm back to that stitch before the chain. So it kinda looks like I am skipped a stitch, but just remember that that stitch, we did our two double crochets. We did a chain and a double crochet, so that counts as two. So now top of the chain three, we're just gonna go into the same spot, this, this chain here, two loops of that stitch onto your hook. Let's push your hook in, two loops of yarn on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it back and slip stitch to join. So just turn your hook and bring it through. And again, chain three, one, two, and three. For this next round, wrap your yarn. This counts as our double crochet. We're just gonna go into that next stitch. So the one that's kind of different, we have to loop it together. So go into that first strand that's kind of lonely Give it a friend on the back. Grab your yarn and bring it back, so make your double crochet. So there is our two double crochets, or what counts as two double crochets. So now chain one. And you can tell if you did your chain one, because there's just one loop of yarn underneath your hook. If you hadn't done your chain one, and you look underneath your hook, you'll see two loops. There's two loops of yarn underneath my hook. Can you see those ones? So that means I have not chained. If you've chained, there's only one loop underneath your hook. So into the next two stitches, we're gonna make one double crochet into each. Into the first stitch, double crochet. Into the second, double crochet. Oh, it started to rain, can you hear that? Now chain one, and into the next two stitches, one double crochet into each. So we're just gonna be doing double crochet, double crochet, chain one. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one. And we're just building these little spaces that we can build into later. This is what we want to be doing. So just keep going around, doing double crochet, double crochet, chain one all the way around, just building these cute little chain one spots, and I'll meet you when we get to the join. It's raining, and it's sunny. So if you hear noise, <laughs> it's not birds on the windows today. So your work will look like this with little spaces, 
in between every pair of double crochets. And I finished my last two double crochets, so I'll do my chain one. And now we're gonna slip stitch one, two, and three, just into the top of this chain three. Grab your yarn and bring it back, turn your hook, and pull it through. Now you're gonna wanna cut about 14 inches of yarn to leave a long tail. We need this for sewing. So pull your hook up and your yarn all the way through and snug that down. So leave this one, just put it together and set it a little away from yourself. We're gonna start our second row. So the next three rows we start a little bit different. We don't need to leave any tail, so we can just do a really short one, like one or two inches, and just make a slip knot. Shrink it down and put it on your hook. Now we're gonna chain 12. One, two, three, four, five, and 12. And now we're gonna go into the very first chain again. So you'll remember it's this one right over here, this first V. So just push your hook in, we're making a big ring this time. So push your hook in and get your tail behaving a little bit. Grab your yarn, bring it through, and bring it through. Sometimes it's easy to turn your hook and go through the second loop the other way around, or just how I did it there. But just get your yarn through both to slip stitch. Chain three again to make your first double crochet or count as your first double crochet. And now we're gonna do 23 double crochets into this ring. And we can go over that tail, we don't need it anymore, so we're just gonna work over it. So 23 double crochets into this ring. So 24 counting our chain three. If you're working your way around and you run out of space, just grab your chain and where you started and grab your stitches and just pull that chain out. Pull it away. And that'll give you a bunch more space to keep making your double crochets. When you've made your 24 double crochets, you can just count again by wiggling them all separate. You can count these Vs along the side if you like, but I just usually wiggle my fingers in between and just count those posts. Make sure you have 24, including your chain three, and we're just gonna slip stitch again to the top of that chain three, just right into that same spot. So push your hook in, two loops of yarn on your hook, grab your yarn and bring it through, turn your hook and bring it through. Chain three, one, two, and three. And now we're gonna do the same row as we did here, which is two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. So we'll go into the next stitch, the one you have to pick up, double crochet, chain one, and two more double crochets, one into each of the next two stitches. So now we're gonna do something a bit different. Turn this one over, we want our pretty side facing down. If you look, one side is like a bit macaroni, like macaroni in a cooking pot, and the other side is more like cute penne pasta or rigatoni. They're all kind of laying down pretty and they look like they're behaving. So we want the side that's behaving facing down. Put your new ring on top and you can just pull that tail through. You can always get it later, it's not a big deal. And now find a chain one spot on the circle you have finished. And we're just gonna push our hook in. It doesn't matter which one, any one. Push your hook down into that space, bring your yarn back, and slip stitch to join. Now we're gonna do our chain one. And we're gonna do one more set. So two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. So just ignore this bit down there. Here's our two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets. So there's our set again, that's what we need to be doing. And now you'll notice, let me just pull my hook out for a sec, that these two sets of double crochets, or this first set of double crochets lines up, and our chain one spot lines up and our last two double crochets line up. So that brings us into this spot over there. So we're skipping a chain one spot. 
So into the second chain one spot, put your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, and slip stitch to join, and chain one. So we'll do that again. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, double crochet. Skip a chain one spot into the second chain one spot on the row below. Push your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back. Slip stitch to join, chain one, two double crochets, chain one and two double crochets into the ring you're working on. So there's our two, there's our chain one, here's our third double crochet and our fourth. Skip a chain one spot and into the second chain one spot, slip stitch and chain one. So it's looking like this. There's little pockets around. That is what we want. See, my tail has gone back inside. Don't even worry about it. You can always just pick it up and through later. And now keep going like this all the way around, making two double crochets, a chain one, and two double crochets. Finding the corresponding chain one spot. Slip stitch, chain one, and here's our last set. So there's four stitches left. It looks, remember this one in the beginning is weird. That's part of our chain, so don't worry about that. You have four real stitches left. So we'll just make one more set. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, double crochet. And now find the corresponding chain one spot. Put your hook down inside, slip stitch to join, chain one, and now we're gonna slip stitch to join again. So we're just gonna go into the top of the chain three, just right there. So push your hook in, grab your yarn and bring it back, turn your hook, and chain one. So this round is now finished. We're gonna cut our yarn. We don't need too much. We're just gonna weave our tail in a little bit. So maybe about five inches, four or five inches. Hook up and yarn through and snug that down to secure. Now we're gonna do our darning needle. You wanna be wor working in these center tails as you go or else it'll be a big mess later and harder to weave in. So put it onto your needle and push it down. I go into the next stitch over. So I just put my hook down into that weird stitch and work it down through my yarn. And then I kind of turn it a bit on the side and then through a whole bunch of these ones in the middle. I weave it down through there. And you can't feel it. I have my finger under here so I know my, my needle is not gone through to the other side completely. And now I just push it through all the way and pull it down. I want this down nice and tight, but I want the rest of it nice and re relaxed. So now I'll st I'm pinching where I pulled it down, but stretch it out a little bit so it's all staying nice and flat and even. Skip a stitch or skip a strand of yarn and now just work back in this fat part underneath these stitches a little bit. It doesn't matter how many. You just want it going the opposite direction. Pull it through and we can cut that one off like that. So that we need this tail and we need this tail. So now that's it for our needle right now. Now we're gonna do this round two more times. So we're making two more of these rounds. So it's gonna be like this. We're just gonna put a, one more on top and one more on top and then a lid like that. So we're kind of making a sandwich. I think of it as a bun and then like pickles, lettuce, cheese, and another bun. So there's five rows all together, or five stacks in our sandwich, and we've done two so far. So now we're gonna keep going. We need to make two more sandwich fillings or snowball fillings. So for this round, we're doing one more of these, which is a chain 12. So there's our chain 12. 
turn it into a ring, so push your hook into that very first stitch and slip stitch to turn it into a ring. Chain three, one, two, and three. So now we're going to make 23 double crochets for 24, including our chain, into the ring. And don't worry about your tail, we don't need it. So you can work over it and cut it off. There's my 24 double crochets, including my chain three. And slip stitch again to the top of that chain three. Push your hook in, two loops of that yarn on your hook. Bring your yarn back and bring your yarn through. Chain three, one, two, three. Double crochet into that next weird stitch, the one you have to pick up in the front. Chain one, double crochet into the next stitch and the next stitch. So there is our block. Get your sandwich stack. You can put your tail through again. It might stay this time, who knows. And now the difference is there's only one of our chain one spots is stitched down and one is loose. So now we don't have to guess which one we're going into. We're just gonna go into all the chain one spots that are loose. So pick a loose chain one spot, put your hook in, grab it and bring it back, slip stitch to join, chain one, and work on your block again. So two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Find the next loose chain one spot. Put your hook down inside there, grab your yarn and bring it back, and slip stitch. Chain one, and build a block again. So double, two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Find a loose chain one spot, the next one over. Put your hook down inside, grab your yarn and bring it back, chain one. Build another block. Two double crochets, chain one, and two double crochets. Into the next chain one spot, put your hook down, slip stitch to join, chain one, build another block. So you can see we're making our, sec our third layer is attaching to our sandwich. Double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, double crochet. Find the next empty one, the next loose chain one spot, slip stitch to join, chain one, and there is our last block again over here before we get to our join. So there's our four stitches. So double crochet, double crochet, chain one, double crochet, double crochet. And don't worry about that space, that's from our chain, so don't worry about it. Find that last empty chain one spot, slip stitch, chain one, and slip stitch to the top of the chain three. So it's just that guy right over there. Slip stitch, chain one, and so we're finished with this round. And we don't need this, this yarn we just need long enough to sew in this tail. So just cut it maybe four inches or so. So we have to do this one one more time. We have three layers of our sandwich. We need five layers. So one more filling, which is the chain 12 round. So chain 12, slip stitch to the first chain to make a ring, chain three, and 23 double crochets into this ring. Check that you have 24. Slip stitch to the top of the chain three, just in there. Chain three to get your height for the next row. And now we're gonna be building our blocks. So double crochet, chain one, 
and two double crochet because our chain three counts as our first double. Now bring your sandwich over, put that tail through, find a loose chain one spot and slip stitch. Chain one and keep working your way around. Slip stitch to join, chain one and cut your yarn, hook up, yarn through, and sew in this tail. 12 Days of Christmas giveaway! Today you are getting, or the lucky winner is getting, one ball of the same yarn I used for my snowballs, and also a seven millimeter tulip crochet hook. So all you have to do is, to enter is put a comment in the comment box below answering the question, what is your favorite holiday activity, like outdoor activity? So just answer the question in the comment box below and the question is, what is your favorite winter activity? Do you like to have snowball fights or go tobogganing? I love tobogganing or tubing down the mountains. It's so much fun skiing. What is your favorite winter activity? So leave that in the comments box below and we will announce the winners on December 24th. Merry Christmas and good luck. And now you're ready to make a lid. We have our bottom bun and our three slices in the middle. So we have four, one, two, three, four. So our fifth layer is going to be a full circle like this. So we're gonna start with a chain three. And remember here, we need to leave a bit of a tail because we're gonna tie it together. So three or four inches is fine. Slip knot and chain three. Slip stitch to the first chain to join. Make a little ring, so slip stitch, chain three, one, two, and three. Holding it open with your thumb and finger, and then into where you're holding it open, the center of that ring, we're going to make 11 double crochets for a total of 12. Make sure you have 12. Slip stitch to the top of the chain three to join. Chain three one double crochet into the same spot just right after that chain and two double crochets into each stitch including this first one that's weird where you have to pick it up at the bottom 24 double crochets including this chain three so 23 double crochets plus the chain three slip stitch to the top of the chain three to join two loops of that stitch on your hook slip stitch, chain three, and now we're ready to start making our sets. So one double crochet, first one into that weird stitch, chain one, two double crochets, one into each of the next two stitches, and now we are ready to join it up with our sandwich. So pull up your hook, make a big a bit of a bigger loop here. You can put a stitch marker in if you want to. But we're gonna tie these two strings together. So the tail from the center of our, our bottom bun to the tail from our center of our top bun. And how I like to do this is a hockey skate tie. I don't know what you call it. If you know a different name for it, please leave it in the comments below but I call it like a hockey skate. So you do it like tying your shoes, like a regular one, but like a regular twisty knot, but then I do it again. So I've done it, I have done it twice. And then when you pull it, it doesn't slip back, which is an easier way to tie your hockey skates. Or figure skating. Okay, so that is tied together. Pull it as snug as you can without attacking your yarn and then one more knot. So we're just knotting these together. We just want it like that. So these two strings are touching inside. And we could tie it once more just to be sure. Nice and snug. And we can cut off those tails. Like that. So now that is all connected. Our sandwich is connected. Now we just have to join this top layer to the edge. So hook, loop back on your hook, find a loose 
chain one spot and we're just going to connect the same way as we did before. Do your last join, slip stitch, chain one, and slip stitch to the top of this chain three to join. Little slip stitch, chain one to secure your yarn. Now we have to leave a longer tail, we need this one for sewing, so leave about 12 or 14 inches. Cut your yarn, hook up and yarn through and snug that down. So this is what we have now. We have our sandwich and we have two tails. Everything else has been taken care of. So take your needle, thread one of the yarns into your needle, and we're just going to work it back. I want to be in these chain one spaces. So if you see where it is now, it's at a chain one spot or close to a chain one spot where we joined. I want it to a loose chain one spot. So I'm just going to loop it through those back loops. Not too tightly. I don't want to change the tension of my snowball. Now I'm in that chain one spot, so I'm just going to go in again and pull my needle up sooner. So I make a little bit of a knot. I want to knot my yarn in the center there. Like that. So I haven't tugged on these stitches, but I did make a little knot when I got to the center of that chain one spot. So now all of our chain one spots are kind of flipped up. You can kind of see where they are. So take your hook and you can go just straight into each one. It doesn't matter which way you go, but just use whatever works for you. I go from the center and out. all the way around into each of those chain one spots and then when I get to the one where I joined I want to go into the chain one into that knot I made so I want to actually go into that stitch that loop I made that's where I'm going to attach everything and now this is the magic you just pull your yarn and it closes up one side of the snowball and make a little knot, so just go into another strand of yarn. Needle through and just snug that down. Make sure it's good and tight. And now I poke my needle down through the center. And I want it to come out the center on this side, like that. So I just bring it all the way through and then leave it alone. It's just going to sit there for a minute. We're going to do the same thing with our other tail. So thread this one onto your needle. And work it over to this chain one spot. So just I just put it through the back loops. and then into that space and bring it through the loop just to make a little bit of a knot. Like that. And now the same except you're, it's not folding up because this is kind of the bottom. Just put them into each, put your needle into each of the chain one spots working your way around. And when you get to where you joined, you want to go into that little knot that you made. So a little bit into the stitch or into the knot, you just need to get your needle in there somehow. Like that. And then do the same thing, gently pull up your yarn. You could just leave this tail in the center, we'll work on that in a minute. Nice and snug, like that. And now we can tie these two strands together. So we'll just do a regular knot, nice and tight. You want to make sure you're not doing it too tight. You want this end to still be, you don't want to like cinch it totally together, but you do want to make a good knot. So 
So once more and snug that one down and again just to be sure there we go now these two tails put them both back through your needle we'll just hide them so thread them onto your needle down back inside up through the center it doesn't totally matter if it doesn't go to the center to be honest with you pull it through and we just want to hide we want them to come in from this side and then we can just cut them off on this side and if you just stretch it all out everything is hidden you have no ends left to do and you've made a snowball so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We have lots of things coming up like this on the channel. So please subscribe if you haven't already. And thanks so much for watching. Stay hooked.